Greetings from Tromaville, I'm Lloyd Kaufman and I'm here with the Toxic Avenger to tell you that when we Troma people are not making those uh, great movies like The Toxic Avenger and Return to Nukem High Volume 1 and Volume 2, we like to kick back and we just love certain continuity because the continuity is really the best kind of... Toxie, what is the name of that show? Uh, creative Continuity. Creative Continuity is just about the best uh, entertainment and education that Toxie and I, and this is the real Toxie, of course, that Toxie and I have ever uh, witnessed in our entire career. Tune in for Creative Continuity's coverage of NYCC. We bring the convention to you. Creative Continuity in New York Comic Con, and I am here with the amazing Lloyd Kaufman. What? Uh, Look. After looking here, the, the big, uh, new, uh, big, uh, come and be part of the interview. The Tromaville Nuclear Power Plant has been bulldozed to make way for Trom Organic Foodstuffs Inc. What could go wrong? Oh, by the way, Excelsior! This doesn't happen very often, but it's like a, a solar eclipse with stars. We have the, the cast of uh, Return to Newcom High right here at the Troma booth. They are writing at their uh, autographs here. And um, may I present Asta Parides, Clay Von Karlowitz, and the beautiful Catherine Cochran. Right here. Right here, and uh, 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 signing the official Return to Newcom High Volume 1 uh, poster. And the Return to Newcom High Volume 2 will be out. I wanted to talk to you more about Toxic Avenger. Toxic Avenger, yes. Yes, yes. Great work, classic. A lot of people love it. Some people yeah, yeah. don't hate it, dislike it. Sure, but many people, people do hate it, actually, but that's would, what makes a world. I would say more people love it. Yes, and in 30 years, I would say Toxie is more famous than 98% of the young stars introduced in 1983 with millions of dollars of advertising. Yeah. Toxie had no ads, basically. A little bit, but not much. A little bit, but not as and, much as these uh, days. And uh, here he is, 30 years later, beloved. They uh, they showed his movie last night at the IFC uh, Center uh, in New York Theater oh, awesome. at midnight, and uh, the theater was pretty full. I was there. I did a and A. I don't know what that stands for, but I did it. They taunted him. They tormented him until he had a horrifying accident and fell into a vat of nuclear waste. Transforming little Melvin into a hideously deformed creature of superhuman size and strength. Melvin became the Toxic Avenger. Will we ever see any more future Toxic Avenger? Would you ever bring him back? Well, I would be delighted to bring back the Toxic Avenger. And we have spent uh, a year writing a very good script uh, that takes Toxie to Chernobyl, uh, which is pretty good in the Toxic world. Now, the problem is I have half of the $600,000 that is needed to make this movie, but I need a, an investor to provide the other half, someone who enjoys losing money, because I am very, very good at that. Well, there you go. You so want to help uh, Great get opportunity. You can help out with Lloyd. And lose money at the same time. Not too many people can do that. But lose money with Lloyd Kaufman. There's a way to go. And brag. Any rate, uh, what else? I'm very busy. Guardians of the Galaxy, I was asked by Mr. James Gunn to portray a very important prisoner in uh, the early part of the movie. And um, it's very sad, but uh, I don't want to be a spoiler, but I uh, do not live to see the end of the film. You should review E.T. No. E.T. Nerd's work is never done. I am in the work? angry video game world. Uh, I'm in the I'm in the ang angry <laughs> video game nerds movie, and it's very good. I have a small cameo, very small, not big enough in my opinion, but um, you know, I think James will put me in part two in a bigger role. And James, by the way, James Rolfe, Mr. Angry Video Game Nerd, plays a fabulous cameo in Return to Nukemai Volume Two. I didn't yes. know that. And there's a very good uh, uh, episode of Angry Video Game Nerd in which Mr. Uh, Rolf uh, 
does a very fine appraisal of the world famous and highly praised Toxic Crusader video game. This is the first time we've had a creator here in the room. And Lloyd Kaufman is one of my favorite directors, nerd. How about uh, you? How about you? Yeah! Oh. Uh-huh. We got some filth here that you got to try out because you just need to feel the pain and suffering of every child in the early 90s inadvertently caused by your creation. No! James loves it. It's like the best He loved ever. it so much he took a shit on it. <laughs> <laughs> on camera. Anyway, I got to wrap this up because yeah, I have no a problem. big line of... Oh, shit, I do have a big line. Yeah. Thank you very much. Um, and thank you to Creative Continuity for making the world a better place. With Bob Camp. So what can you tell us about Rain Center? How did you start with it? You know what, it, it was kind of a, a, a fluke. There were a couple of characters in a show that John Kay came up with uh, that he pitched to Nickelodeon and they said we like the dog and the cat. So we made a cartoon about a dog and a cat. And that's kind of what it was. And we just sort of made it up as we went along. So everything was just on the spot as you went, and you just didn't plan that's much. That's the story of my life. Yeah, I'm faking it one minute at a time. Well, usually that's the best way to go. It's the only way to go, man. And uh, anybody who pretends to know what they're talking about or doing is is uh, either way smarter than me or a liar. Now, were there moments where a lot of things got in the way and things got very stressful? Oh, yeah. TV production's always stressful, you know and we were pushing the limits and we were trying to do something no one ever did in animation before and we sort of didn't always care what the network thought and so you know it wasn't it was like one of those sort of relationships you have when you have a business and then you have a bunch of crazy artists trying to do something nobody ever did before and break a lot of rules and you know do some fun stuff so there was, you know it was it was, uh, it could be really stressful, there were politics, there was some bad blood sometimes, but, you know, everybody that worked on it wanted to make the funniest cartoons ever made, and that was why, that's why it's a good show, you know. Oh, Billy's amazing, Billy's like, he's the, the voice machine, he can do anybody, I mean, he's, he's like Dawes Butler or Mel Blanc, he's just one of these amazing voice guys who does super iconic, really great voices, he's, He's great. We'd have shows where he'd come in and do all the voices, and we wouldn't have somebody, and we'd say, okay, do him as Jackie Gleason, and he would come up with Jackie Gleason or whoever, and he could do the voice perfectly, and he was really funny. And he would take funny scripts and make them way funnier by just ad-libbing and being, you know, the best at what he does. Do you have any plans for any future shows you might want to create? Any, like new cartoon shows that you ever I, had in mind? I got lots, yeah. I'm always developing stuff, always pitching ideas. I'd tell you, but I'd have to kill you. It's one of those things for secret, you know. But, uh, yeah, um, yeah, I got some TV show ideas I'm working on, uh, working on a treatment for a movie idea. Plus, I still work in the business. I'm working on uh, the SpongeBob TV series now, just started. Before that, I was working on the Peanuts movie, like up until last week, and then I worked on the SpongeBob movie before that, so yeah, kind of busy. Any favorite story? Uh, yeah, we got some favorite stories. Something maybe personal that you favor? <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of that, but I'm not gonna tell you. We just met. I mean, wow. Uh, <laughs> uh, you know, it was just constant crazy mayhem. You know, um, I can't think of anything offhand, but. I'm just in drawing mode. I just drew this uh, picture of uh, Ren and Stimpy for one of one of the customers. This is a commission that I just drew uh, two minutes ago. And that's actually quite amazing that you still draw for your customers and you you know you allow them to give you an idea of what to draw for them. Sure, it helps me because I if I have to sit here and invent something new every time, it's kind of draining. I mean, I can do it. I started out as a street caricature artist but uh, so I would do that all day and I can do it but if somebody has a favorite character or an idea it gives me something to start with it's always good but I love doing this you know it's fun to meet the fans and see all my old friends from the comic book days and you know hang out it's cool 
Hi, this is Bob Camp on Creative Continuity, and I'm here to tell you something really serious today, and it's about Mr. Horse. And no, sir, he doesn't like it. Thank you. Now, what is it like to be uh, signing a poster, Captain Cochran? It's quite cool. It's very humbling, honestly, to, that people even want my signature. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. That's, that's pretty cool. I, I'm never, I'm never uh, not amazed that anybody wants to talk to me. Yeah, right. Nobody wants to talk to Captain Cochran. Yeah, right. You're so uh, ugly. Are you kidding? We want, everybody wants to talk to Captain Cochran. I want well, to I, I don't know about that, Lloyd. I think they're more here to talk to you. But, you know, we'll see. We'll see. One day. <laughs> you said just the right thing. Thank you. Very objective. <laughs> very, very objective. Thank you so much, Catherine Cochran. Now, Clay von Kollowitz, were you not last in the, uh, in, in uh, Clay was in uh, a land called England, a small town, Peniston. And what exactly did you do in Peniston? I'm sorry, which network is this? Uh, I should have asked. So. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, this is my favorite, this is my favorite program. Uh, but anyway, I was in Barnsley, uh, South Yorkshire, England, to shoot a dark comedy thriller called Banjo, uh, written and directed by Liam Regan, who was a PA on the set of Return to Newcomb High. So look out for Banjo. It's going to be a great movie. comes out next year. Happy to promote um, my, my work on this great program, which I'm a big fan of. Where, where were we before we were so rudely interrupted? Uh, uh, these people are so rudely. Right? Any final words for the fans? Hey, advice, what's the big takeaway from working on Return to Newcomb High, Volume 1 and Volume 2? If there was an overarching theme to your advice for young uh, would-be human beings. Would-be human beings? What, uh, what about would-be aliens? That's still okay? I <laughs> Would-be extraterrestrials? I think my advice would be make the films that you want to make. Stay true to the art that you want to do and be yourself, let your freak flag fly, because honestly, that's the only way to be successful and really happy in this business, is to stay true to the art you want to make. And Troma is kind of the ultimate underdogs, and in Return to Newcomb High, we tell the story of um, the underdogs kind of triumphing. So I think it, I think it's quite cool, and I think that uh, that's been the slogan of Troma for some time now. Nicely put, Catherine Cochran, the, uh, the underdog, very good. And I am the under bitch. <laughs> Thank you, Catherine. I and mean, the trauma artists are pretty interesting, right? They, they are. Everybody wants to, you know, be in Guardians of the Galaxy, which is a fabulous movie. But how cool that she says she believes in what she's doing, and that's what it's all about. And what are you doing, Ben? Who is this person? Oh, just kidding. Thought I'd make him nervous. All right. So, luckily, there are no cameras here, so nobody knows. <laughs> oh, oh, you're on my camera. So. I thought that was a bug. Actually, it is a bug. <laughs> How's it going? I'm pretty good. How are you? I'm good. Are you having a good con so far? So far, so good. Where are you from? I wanted to talk to you about the Toxic event. By the way, I would like to show you. This is the new iSys phone. You can use it as a ninja star and it decapitate people. Just wanted to let you know, Apple's amazing. Is that oh, a new sorry. Idea? So tell me about Ren and Stimpy. Tell you, you have to tell me. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I'm just messing with you, don't worry. Is that a new product they're trying to sell? Uh, the ISIS phone, yes. It's, a, uh, it's uh, really uh, making people go out of their heads. Anyway, go on. Oh, who is it? It's Mr. Horse. Hi. <laughs> Sorry.